Stoichiometry is the most important thing that we do during this entire unit. Uh, the, the reason for it is stoichiometry is about prediction. It's about identifying how much you should get from a chemical reaction. And when you deal with simple chemical reactions, it's not that big of a deal because you typically have like a precipitate or a solid formed from the chemical reaction. So it's easy to measure how much was produced. But when you're talking about gases and the gas that you look at and the substance that you're looking at as a product is a gas that might have escaped from the chemical reaction, it is much more difficult to actually do calcul um, to do measurements. So that's what we're going to use some gas stoichiometry from for. So in all gas stoichiometry problems, regardless of what we're doing, we're always going to do three things. We're always going to have to use a balanced chemical equation. We are always going to have to do some sort of mole conversion, and we always have to do PV equals NRT. Obviously, the PV equals NRT is the important part that separates a stoichiometry problem, which only uses numbers one and two, versus a gas stoichiometry problem, which will also use PV equals NRT. So here is an example. Calcium hydride, CaH2, reacts with water to form hydrogen gas. And here's the chemical reaction. How many grams of calcium hydride are needed to generate 10 liters of hydrogen gas if the pressure of hydrogen is 740 millimeters of mercury at 23 degrees Celsius? Okay, so remember, there are three things that you have to do. You have to use your balanced reaction. You have to do some sort of mole conversion and you have to use PV equals NRT. Now there are only two types of gas stoichiometry problems. There are ones that you have to use PV equals NRT first, and there are ones where you have to use PV equals NRT last. You can't really tell from the beginning of which one is which until you kind of lay out the information that you have. So let's always, as we do a mathematical problem, write down our formula. And when we write down our formula and start to fill in what we know, you'll see what type of problem this is immediately. So it gives me the pressure in millimeters of mercury, but of course we know that we can't deal with millimeters of mercury, we have to deal with atmospheres. So to go from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, we divide by 760, and do that real quick. Should be a little less than uh, one atmosphere, 0.974. Sig figs are not important here because you only count sig figs in your final answer. Uh, they tell me that my volume is 10 liters. That's given right here. My N. Now, in the previous type of stoichiometry problems, or PV, uh, yeah, PV equals NRT, we always had some sort of grams to work off of. So I look in this problem and I see that it says how many grams. So I don't have any information for moles right now. So I'm going to come back to that one in a second. And then it tells me my temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, and of course it has to be in Kelvins. So I'm going to add 273, and this becomes 296 Kelvins. Now notice that the only piece of information from PV equals NRT that we're missing is the moles. And the question says how many grams of calcium hydride, but they give me information in hydrogen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for moles of hydrogen. And then I'm going to use stoichiometry to find the grams of calcium hydride. So since I have all the information necessary for PV equals NRT, I'm going to use PV equals NRT first here. So I have 0 0.974 times 10 equals N times 0 0.0821 times 296. Let's plug it in my calculator. Okay, so I've already got my pre pressure up there from my previous calculation. Time 10 divided by, parentheses are your friend, at 0 0.0821 times 296, close my parentheses, and I get 0 0.400666, blah, 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 blah. Now this, again, is moles of hydrogen, and if I'm ever confused about what it what substance it's for, I always have to just look back at the problem and see where the information, and look for basically the word of, because the of will always tell me what substance. Okay, now I don't want moles of hydrogen, I don't want grams of hydrogen, I want grams of calcium hydride. So I'm going to now do my stoichiometry. Now notice I've used PV equals NRT, so I can check that off my list. So 0 0.40067 moles. Go to my balanced chemical equation. Oh, using the balanced chemical equation. Check. Okay, so two hydrogens for every one calcium hydride. 
And now let's do that mole conversion and convert from moles to grams. So one mole of any substance is equal to the weight of that substance from the periodic table, which happens to be 42.10 grams. Go to my calculator. My moles is already up there. That's why it doesn't matter how many numbers I write down because the number's already in the calculator. Times 42.1 divided by two. Ooh, too much. Divided by two is 8.43. So I will get 8.43 grams of calcium hydride from this chemical reaction. Okay. Now let's see another one. The breakdown of glucose in our bodies produces carbon dioxide, which is expelled from our lungs as gas. Calculate the volume of dry CO2 produced at body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, and one atmosphere when five grams of glucose is consumed in this reaction. Now you'll notice that this problem looks very similar to the previous problem. So there's no real clear way to identify whether or not I have to use PV equals NRT first or last. So again, I'm going to write down my formula and fill in my information and see which one this happens to apply to. My pressure in this case is one atmosphere. My volume is what I'm looking for because it says calculate the volume. N. Ooh, wait a second. Last time I looked for N because I had the volume, but this time they tell me I have five grams of glucose, but I can't use that to find the moles right now because think about this. This is a gas stoichiometry problem, and I'm going to be using the ideal gas law, but glucose is a solid. So I can't use the five grams of glucose directly to find moles, but I can do a mole conversion. I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. The weight of glucose is 180.18 grams. And I'm going to do my, oh, and I'm, I'm going to do my, um, so that is going to convert me to moles of glucose. Now I'm going to do my mole ratio. And between glucose, 1C6H12O6, and of course I'm looking for CO2. And there are six, there are six CO2s in this reaction. So clear out my previous problem. Five times six, of course, is thirty. Divided by one, eighty point one eight is point one one six six five moles. Now I'm in carbon dioxide. So this is the number that's going to go in there. And of course, the last is my temperature, which is thirty-seven degrees Celsius plus two seventy-three which comes out to be 310 kelvins. Now that's an exact number because I added an exact number to it. So I'm going to put the decimal in there to indicate that there's three significant figures in that particular calculation. Now notice PV equals NRT in this problem is coming last because I'm calculating volume. And that's kind of the way you'll be able to identify PV equals NRT coming first or last is are you calculating for something in PV equals NRT or are you calculating for something that is outside, meaning like grams, which is not in the PV equals NRT calculation. So plug in our numbers. 1.00 times V, because that's what I'm looking for. 0.1665 times 0 .0, 0 0.0821 times 310. My moles are already up there. 0 0.0821 times 310 comes out to be 4.4.237 liters. And of course, I go back and I check, double check my sig figs. This number has three sig figs. This number has three sig figs. And my temperature has three sig figs. So I'm going to quick modify my answer to be 4.24 liters. Uh, and that's the number of liters of carbon dioxide. So again, did I use my balanced chemical? So I had three things. I had to use my reaction. I had to do my mole conversion, and I used PV equals NRT, okay? I don't know if my answer is right, but if I did those three things, at least I'm on the right track. So I used my balanced chemical reaction here. I did a mole conversion here, and I used PV equals NRT 
here. So therefore, at least I know my answer is in the right ballpark. And that's how to do a gas stoichiometry problem.